Hi everyone, welcome to another MSI Insider live stream. Today I'm here with Martijn. Hello, hello uh, everyone. You might remember him, he's been here two times before, I think. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, so Martijn works for AMD. And what's your official title there again? My official title is Product and Business Development Manager. But it seems I get to be here all the time when we have awesome new products to show, so. Yeah, it was a bit long, so we made you a product manager for now. That will do, okay? <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Yeah. So last time we had a bit of a struggle with the live stream because we wanted to do some live benchmarks, but then our stream crashed. Um, and then we promised that Martijn will be back. So today is the day. And always when Martijn comes here, there is something new, right? Something nice and new to show. So today we uh, are talking about something fancy called the Ryzen Threadripper 3990X, world's fastest desktop CPU, 64 cores, 128 threads. And we've got some nice uh, info to, uh, to share with you today, but also to live demo this, uh, this bad boy. So thanks to Guru 3 d also, because we borrowed their sample for today's test setup. Um, we got the new CPU on our Creator TRX40. Later on, we'll also do testing with it, stuff like that. Um, and also today, we have a nice giveaway. So if you go to, let me get the right one. If you go to msi.com slash two slash insider, there you can participate in the chat I will also do a command that you will see a direct link to the giveaway. And we will be giving away several uh, codes for Monster Hunter Iceborne. It's Monster Hunter World Monster Iceborne. Monster, it's, yeah. um, <laughs> it's a mouthful. Yeah, it's a mouthful. <laughs> so also on stream we played the original Monster Hunter World and it's like the winter version. So yeah. It was snowing outside. So that today it was, today surprisingly. Today in the Netherlands it yeah. was uh, yep. suitable. Uh, so make sure to check it out. Um, it's also in a bundle right now, I think with AMD VGA graphics cards. Graphics cards, right? yeah, graphics cards. Yeah, correct. So also make sure to check out, if you go to the MSI website, to promotions. There you will also see the different promotions running with graphics cards. Um, and you can actually get this game for free as well. But maybe you already win it today. Who knows? Um, so we have a lot to talk about today. Yeah, you have several topics lined up, right? Yeah, yeah. So. So yeah, thanks for start? having me. <laughs> yeah, you're always welcome to have okay. you. And I think our audience is also very happy that you're here. Oh, so thanks. if you have any That's questions great, in the meanwhile, well, make sure to put them in chat. Uh, Matan will try to answer as many as possible. Yep. Might not be able to answer any, one, any of them, but um, yeah. We'll and see we want to save some get. time for the live demo too, right? I mean, we've yeah, got some, some awesome hardware to show off and uh, some, some great benchmarks to, uh, to show you guys. that's what we wanted to do last time, but yeah. then the stream crashed. So we yeah, we had some internet problems, right? Yeah. And it's unfortunate, but these, these things happen when you go live. So yeah, we've got to deal with it. And well, we promised to be back. So here we are with even better products now. So uh, I yeah. think it's quite exciting. Let's get going. All right. So maybe first take a look at the platform. Yeah, that sure. We're yeah. So let's take a little bit of a, uh, you know, a couple of months back, we've launched uh, the third generation Ryzen Threadripper parts, uh, our 3000 series Threadripper, uh, basically completing our 3000 series stack. So this means uh, all the way at the bottom, we have our Athlon 3000G, uh, perfect for everyday computing at an affordable price point. Also and with integrated graphics, right? Yes, okay. exactly, with Vega 3 graphics, so mm -hmm. very uh, very capable graphics if you're playing 720p, for example. Or uh, watching high definition video. Exactly, like you can you can watch anything on that. So it's it's a great little part for that kind of money, and, and what you want to do is, uh, especially if you're an all day user, you know, using your system for internet or office use, this is a perfect uh, everyday computing CPU. So uh, very interesting to see that at the bottom of our stack, but uh, going into the mainstream, and I think all you guys know this already, we have a Ryzen uh, third generation uh, products, uh, Ryzen 3000 series. So um, moving on from uh, 3600 to all the way up to a 3950X. Uh, 16 cores, uh, 32 threads in the mainstream socket, so already pushing the boundaries basically of mm -hmm. uh, last generation's HEDT, I yeah. would say, platform. So AM4 for many people, familiar socket? Yeah, AM4 familiar socket, so still upgradable. If you are uh, on an older motherboard, for example, you can still pop in. So AM4 these has been going for a while now. Yeah, more than Since four years already, yeah. I would say. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's something we promised. Uh, obviously, we want to give you guys an upgrade path, so uh, I think we... Uh, we fully, uh, you know, made that promise came uh, come true, uh, and we continue using uh, AM4. As we see, we can also introduce newest technology like PCI Express Gen 4 on the same socket. So there is no reason yet for us to, no to make a move. No limitations there. Yeah. No, no. So um, it's interesting to see that whether you're, uh, you know, uh, for everyday computing or a mainstream gamer or an enthusiast gamer or overclocker, there is always an AM4 CPU uh, for your needs available at your uh, disposal. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the final piece of our puzzle is obviously the Ryzen third generation Threadripper or the Ryzen Threadripper follow-up for the second generation. Uh, and this completes our 3000 series stack. Uh, 
But if you can, if you can see, uh, if you look at the details on screen here, uh, you see we still have the second generation mentioned in here because it fills in a nice gap between our Ryzen 9 mainstream products like 3950X. Yeah. So these are still core, readily available. Still widely available, uh, still a nice, uh, let's say, entry-level HEDT as we like to call it right now mm -hmm. because we push those boundaries of HEDT even higher. Uh, you know, you can say this is now entry-level HEDT. <laughs> entry but level. they are, they are yeah. you know, we made some price moves on those. They're so still they're high-end CPUs. They're <laughs> still high-end CPUs. If you need those yeah. PCI lanes at an affordable price point, you can still go for a second gen, obviously. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're already on an X399 motherboard. So if you're now sporting an 8-core, 12-core CPU and you still want that 16-core or even a 32-core CPU, you can move on to the second generation Threadrippers uh, easily yeah. without having to update, upgrade But that's still your PCI Express 3.0, right? Yep, Gen 3. Exactly. So 4.0 is a nice way to go to we're, new platform. Yes, we're here with 4.0. So if you really need those PCI lanes, if you really need that fast bandwidth when talking about uh, SSD performance or Ma graphics card talking performance. Talking about SSD performance, maybe some people already saw it in the front, but we yeah, have some boxes. Some, some boxes. Because <laughs> uh, Seagate was uh, nice enough to send us some Gen 4 SSDs, 6 to be exact. Wow. So later on, we'll also see what we can do with 6. PCI Express Gen 4 SSDs on the TRX40 platform. Wow, that's mind blowing. I, I can promise you it will be pretty insane. It was yeah. it was even faster than I expected, so make sure to check it out later on the stream. So we will be using six of those at the same time on the setup today, right? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. So you guys better. We will stick combine around. all of them to get the maximum performance out of this. That's perfect. Because um, if you, for example, have X570, also supports PCI Express Gen 4. Um, but there you have like a certain limitation on your lanes, obviously. Yep. And with TRX40, you have so many lanes, so you can put so much storage on there. And crazy bandwidth. Crazy bandwidth, yep. which we will definitely see later on. So make sure to check it out. Yeah, normally I would say these types of CPUs would really, you know, be for the enthusiast and be for uh, gamers. But uh, you know, on the same side of things, also use this as uh, productivity mm -hmm. or office use at the same time. But really, the third generation like Threadripper, the prosumers. yeah, the prosumers. Yeah. But the 3990X is really for those workstation audiences, for those render audiences, so like professional use cases. So. Um, today we have a setup, but we are not the type of customer that will be using these parts. Uh, these will be uh, used in mainly like Hollywood effects, um, visual effects, uh, rendering, compiling, um, you know, um, anything you do with mastering and encoding. There are so many work uh, scenarios to be thought Everything of. Everything that's extremely that CPU intensive. Well, that's CPU intensive, that scales intensive well. intensive. Or memory intensive also. With, yeah, with multiple cores, but also with huge uh, available bandwidth that you have with your memory, uh, which is basically why this 3990X exists today. And uh, obviously, we wanted to uh, push the envelope well, like we did with the introduction of the 3960X and the 3970. So I think on the next couple of slides, you can see what we've did, uh, done with uh, the introduction of a 3970X and a 3960X. Mm -hmm. So we were already pushing the boundaries of HEDT uh, compared to last generations and compared to our competitor. Uh, you know, you will see in a couple of more slides later on that uh, the number of um, you know, improvements we made and scalability on the number of cores we've uh, increased not only show in the benchmarks in terms of just core increase, but also mm -hmm. IPC improvements. So architectural improvements, uh, NUMA improvements, so more and more uh, we will go into detail a little bit later. Um, but you know, we've already uh, created a new landscape basically for HEDT. And so the IPC is like the, the raw performance of the core, right? Yeah, clock for clock I would say, and the architectural performance has now been a major increase on the third generation as well. Because um, that's one of the major reasons for the step up from the second generation to That's the third generation. one of generation, them, yeah. Right? Obviously, we have the power of 7 nanometer with our partners TSMC. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the Zen 2 architecture, which is very capable of, you know, scaling up as well. And obviously, the chiplet design, um, you know, with our chiplet topology awareness. Now, uh, you will see not only just Zen 2 architecture and 7 nanometer taking a lot of credit for that performance increase, but over our second generation, that chiplet architecture and the chiplet um, uh, topology will also, uh, you know, greatly increase the performance and the uh, I/O, uh, yeah, and the latency in terms of uh, memory usage. Cool. I yep. see in chat some people are asked for the giveaway. I put the visual down there, so if you go to msi.com/2/insider, they're all able to participate. Uh, also in chat, if you type exclamation mark giveaway, you will also get a direct link to uh, to Gleam. Um, yeah, and then secondly, yeah. uh, if we continue on this uh, topic right now, um, you saw exceptional uh, um, performance. Uh, performance. Uh, you nice saw, yeah, nice but this, this is the performance itself. So uh, if you see uh, moving on from eight core all the way up to 32 cores. So, so this is like what the environment was 
up until up until 2018 yeah. it was like 16 cores right that yeah. was it and um yeah so uh, we've made that step towards 24 core 32 cores so this is like pretty much the 2019 line so this yeah. is all yeah, this is how we ended yeah. 2019, basically, with our third generation Ryzen Threadripper. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see the sheer performance increase and a nice scalability using, for example, Cinebench, really CPU-intensive benchmark with a lot of scalability. Uh, you will see that it really b uh, benefits from more and more cores, um, as well as, uh, you know, IPC improvements at the same time. So, but there were still uh, customers in the industry asking, can you deliver something with more cores? And we were like, more cores? I mean... Some people Even always more want more CPU. Core. <laughs> wow. And yeah, this is where I would say this is not where we are the typical customers because we typically don't have this kind of question. We just want more performance, you know, mm -hmm. from FPS or those kind of uh, um, standards we're asking for, yeah. right? But these guys working with a day-to-day -day usage, um, you know, having uh, heavy workloads at the CPU level um, and really pushing uh, its boundaries and putting rendering more and more things files, at the yeah. same time, rendering more and more files at the same time, creating And also doing stuff files. simultaneously. Simultaneous, uh, So yes. while rendering, still continuing to work. Exactly. So they, they can do uh, multiple things at the same time. And what they saw with the 3970X, they saw the potential to uh, increase even more uh, in terms of uh, productivity for them. Um, to uh, lower the time needed for them to finish their projects or finishing rendering times or mastering and encoding, etc. So time is money in this business, Time right? is money. <laughs> so just imagine if you have 100 people working for you on several projects, for example, a big Hollywood studio, mm -hmm. um, you can easily see that if you can shave off maybe 10, 20 minutes per render scene, whatever, uh, you will save uh, a lot of money because you uh, have your employees working at multiple projects at the same time or more projects in a day or in a week. In the so end. it will either cost you less time or you will have more output in the same time. Exactly. So yeah, it makes sense for them to invest in this. And um, I hate to go into the sales perspective side of things, but a total cost of ownership, which is a term broadly used in this sense, mm -hmm. um, is, is very interesting because you know, you're, once you're in, uh, investing in the CPU or a whole platform, uh, you will see by the reduction of rendering time, you will free up more time for them to finish more projects, in the end making you more money as a so company. So by the cost you save, you can finance the CPU, basically. Exactly. So it, it, it all depends on your scenario, obviously. If you're a, a hardcore user of rendering, uh, you do this on a da uh, daily usage. Um, this CPU will definitely uh, help you out in that sense. Yes. Cool. I see a question in chat. Hi, guys. Can you advise me with B450 motherboard? for the Ryzen 7 3700X with updated BIOS. Um, if you're going for a third generation Ryzen and you want to have out of the box uh, support for these CPUs on B450, I would recommend you to look at the max models we have right now. So they come with the 32 megabyte BIOS um, and they have out of the box support for these third gen Ryzen CPUs. So take a look at the, the different Max models. Uh, for example, the Tomahawk Max is a really nice model. We have several more flavors and sizes, and so make sure to look out for those. Uh, luckily, I already have a Kofi game uh, with the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 I bought online recently for my first ever PC build. Waiting for the MAG X570 Tomahawk Wi Fi motherboard to complete my build. For gaming, that's a really nice setup, I'd say. Yeah, awesome. So third gen Ryzen, doing really well in gaming as well. Yeah, six cores, 12 threads. I mean, it's a, it's a sweet spot right now for where you're spending your money. Uh, yeah, exactly. Obviously, some games benefit from eight core, 16 thread, but yeah. it's, uh, I think the six but cores, still, 12 threads are really pretty much nice. where it maxes out. Yep. So yep. these kind of CPUs, of course, you can game on them, but yeah. Yeah, a 3990X, you mean, uh, it, you can it's handle not going anything to give you throw you, at it. But it's, but it's not going to give you 100 more FPS. No, this is purposely to... built for those content creators. Exactly. So this is the customer for these CPUs. And you can do gaming on the side because you finish your daily job e earlier, so you have time left to play <laughs> some time. games. So you could do that, but I don't think the boss will be yeah. very happy. If you only do it, gaming so. on, on your PC, then... AM4 will be a better choice it's, than this, it's right? A, a mainstream AM4 platform yeah. is great, and third gen Ryzen will uh, will smash any game. Yeah. But like basically, this is the same technology, just in a bigger package, right? Yeah, and, and we will go into a little bit more details yeah. later, but it's a uh, chiplet architecture, Zen 2, um, uh, yeah, 7 nanometer, obviously, the power of that, so great performance per watt. Power efficiency is great. And a uh, higher IPC also higher gives IPC. you the better game forms compared to the second generation Ryzen Threadripper, for example. Yeah, it's the architectural improvements that make the difference. But as I mentioned, it's also the chiplet uh, topology now that makes the uh, direct NUMA uh, a lot uh, faster. Um, so lower latency and, and faster responsiveness. And yeah, that makes a huge amount of difference as well. Yeah. 
So, yeah, um, at the back half of 2019, uh, I believe it was the 25th of November, we've launched uh, the Ryzen Threadripper 3960X as our entry level third generation 24 That's core. You also had, uh, were here as a guest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> For the yeah. TRH40 platform with the new uh, third gen Ryzen Threadripper CPU. Yeah. And then secondly, we've uh, you know pushed the envelope already with the 32 core uh, 3970X. So um, similar to the first generation, we try to push for more cores. Uh, second generation, we've already introduced the 2990WX. Mm -hmm. And uh, with all the improvements we could do, cramming that into a 32 core part with the 3970X, you can already see on the core to core difference because of all the IPC improvement that the 3970X is a lot faster than the 2990WX, for example. And also, it, it depends a bit on your workload, but the 3960X, which is a 24-core processor, mm -hmm. is in certain situations can be faster than a 32-core from the previous generation. Yeah, because that's also the, because of the chip topology yeah. and, and yeah, the differences the new that the architecture makes. Yeah. Uh, definitely, that is the case in some cases. Yeah, uh, of course, it depends a bit on what you do on it. Exactly. It yeah. depends on the application you're running, uh, what kind of uh, output you need. Um, but generally, we would say, uh, sometimes a 24 core is equal to the previous generation 32 core. So uh, it might be interesting for you to look at, you know, should I upgrade on my X399 motherboard right now, or should I still consider moving up to a TRX40 platform? For yeah. sure. Yeah. We have an interesting question in chat. Um, Dennis is asking, what PSU is recommended, uh, recommended for the main board and the CPU? Well, this. Of course, it depends on many factors, also what kind of graphics card are you using. Um, but like, what would you say in general for, for example, the 64 core CPU, well, like what? It's a lot of cores and threads, obviously, and mm -hmm. it, you know, this, this huge amount of PCI lanes and memory bandwidth, today, it just draws some for, power. Yeah. <laughs> today we're using a 1200 watt uh, yeah. power supply. It's not so the it's bare lot. minimum that you need a 1200. No. You can run it on a 1000 watts or an 850 watts. You can run it just fine. Uh, but it depends on your use case. So if you're really stressing the CPU, maybe mm -hmm. 12 to 24 hours a day, and you really want the utmost performance from it, especially when playing around with a little bit of PBO, you know, precision boost overdrive, uh, you can get more performance from the platform. So Because that will definitely... automatically sense what your system can do, right? And then yeah. boost up your performance based upon, for example, temperature or stuff like that. Yeah, it, it definitely helps you. And and uh, it definitely, um, let's say, uh, gives people more performance back if you're investing in a high wattage PSU. But it's not just the wattage, yeah. it's also the quality of the power supply that yeah. makes a difference. And also the temperature, your CPU cooling, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, cooling, uh, ambient temperatures, um, what kind of memory you match this with because of the Infinity Fabric, same layout as mm -hmm. the Ryzen uh, third generation mainstream CPUs. Uh, we still have, obviously, Infinity Fabric to take into account. <clears throat> Sorry. So um, you would generally like to pair this with a 3600 megahertz kit mm -hmm. so you can run it one to one ratio with the infinity fabric and get the most performance out of the system uh, but for workstation usage i imagine and we would see this uh, obviously with our customers as well that they generally go for higher uh, amounts of memory rather than speed yeah so yeah but you will see this more and more in the, in the use cases when we move on to demonstrating the 3990x cool yeah, yeah, I already mentioned it a little bit. We still we have some customers <laughs> yeah. asking for, for more there, There's cores. always customers asking for more. <laughs> yeah, just imagine, you know, in, in a Hollywood studio, if you look at a major Hollywood movie nowadays, um, you would find at least like five minutes of CGI being done, right, in the movie, mm -hmm. like some, some scenes, and et cetera. It, it adds up to at least five minutes of CGI being done. That's 300 seconds times 24 frames, 24 FPS It's quite a lot second. of frames. So, so that's 7,200 frames. So... Um, if you outsource this and, and have this rendered at the previous generation speeds, uh, it would take up to like 300 days to get this rendered. So 300 days. Uh, if we could, by introducing a 64 core part based on the third gen Threadripper uh, uh, architecture and, and the IPC improvement we made, uh, even reduce it slightly, let's say by 30%, that would immediately save up a lot of free time for those guys working on those projects and being able to finish those movies faster. So. There were still use cases where people uh, were asking us, can you do more cores? Uh, so uh, obviously, as a technology innovator, we try to push and push the boundaries. So uh, we've, came up, uh, we've come up with, uh, obviously, with the benefits of our chiplet architecture, that we could fit 64 cores in this package and also in the, a consumer motherboard. The production process is also really important here, right? Because yes. with an older, bigger process, it's impossible to fit that number of cores 
on yeah, such it, it, the small chiplet CPU. architecture really helps out here. Yeah. yeah, for sure. If you're wanting to do this monolithic, there is no way you can do this. But it's the chiplet architecture um, that really enabled us to be more dynamic, to to find these um, kind of configurations and and uh, yeah, these high core count CPUs made available for any consumer or any professional to buy off the shelf. So we have some cool video about this, right? Yeah, we have an introduction. Let's, Let's show it. it. There you have it, 64 cores. To render them all. To render them all, basically. <laughs> the name yeah. already says it. I think it's that's the best slogan you can ever yeah. think of for a CPU <laughs> with the core count that we have. Um, yeah, if you look at uh, all the specs, I think it's in the next one, uh, you can see uh, all the 64 cores, 128 threads, glory. Um, a whopping 288 megabytes of cache, uh, boost frequency is up to 4.3 gigahertz. That's Base a lot. Do you remember like those old MP3 players? Yeah. Like that had less memory than this has yeah, in cache. 256 megabytes <laughs> of like MP3 that. player back <laughs> in the day, yeah, yeah. I still love my old cassette tapes though. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, then, back then, you only had like a few megabytes of cache on your CPU, but now 288 yeah. is, is insane. Yeah, if you look at mainstream processors, and we've already stretched that with obviously with Ryzen getting up to 72 megabytes of cache with 3950X, um, and there it really made sense in, in terms of helping our gaming performance. Uh, but for these parts, you can see it will help in general IO performance, bandwidth, etc., uh, CPU-related um, tasks. So it makes sense to introduce more and more cache in this sense uh, because of the chiplet arc, uh, design as well. Um, and this is available uh, for 3990 US dollars. So uh, that's why I'm saying you and I are probably not the right type of customer for this CPU. But if you look at the performance you're getting for that kind of money, usually you would have to buy a dual socketed system to get even close to that kind of performance. And it will cost you 20, maybe 30K to invest into the whole ecosystem to get just that type of performance, right? Like I was preparing this system and our video editor, Robin, I had to like drag him away from it. He was, he was drooling all over <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's still working though. <laughs> He's waterproof. doing a lot of rendering, so yeah, yeah 64 cores. Uh, I can imagine he happy. is a typical <laughs> customer to, to yeah, have exactly. these kind of CPUs in his system for everyday use, right? To, mm -hmm. uh, to shorten his render times, to make sure that he can do multiple applications simultaneously, yeah. continue writing or reading emails uh, while uh, waiting on his render to finish uh, or a scene to finish. Um, and it's really what makes this uh, CPU something special in the market right now. Cool. Yeah. And this is how it's built up. Because this we, is, we already uh, talked a little puzzle, bit about the say, yeah. chiplet architecture. Yeah. But on this image, you can really see how, what it looks like on the inside, basically. Yeah, so I think we have one here. This is the, yes, we have one here for the third generation. Let me open that one up. I have a yep. camera right here. Without so breaking it. <laughs> Oops, here you have the detailed camera, yeah, right? Yeah, let's show it up close. Okay, so I'll take this outside. You can hold it. So this is actually the uh, 3970X, so yep. the, the smaller brother of the, the one that we're using right now in the system. Mm -hmm. um, still 32 cores, 64 threads. You know, single CPU. So, but it's, it's the same size. Yep. And, um, Physically, it yeah. fits the same socket, TRX40 or so STRX4. If we take a look at the, the image right here, you can see that you have four chiplets um, yep. on CCDs, one side, then you have it. the I.O. die in the middle, and four more uh, chiplets on the other side. Yeah. So if okay. we take a look at it, if I turn it like this, here on top, you have four of the chiplets with the cores, Correct. then the I.O. die right in the middle, and four chiplets Right yeah, there. and each chiplet has their own infinity fabric. That's why this is the biggest difference between the second generation is that you have lower memory latency and much mm -hmm. more uh, performance coming from that as well. So it's not just the architecture from the Zen 2 cores, but it's also the way this CPU has physically been built uh, that is giving us a lot of performance increase as well over the second generation. Yeah. And what's also quite important to mention here is that uh, it's soldered, right? So yep. because the the chiplets are quite far on the side on the CPU as well, to have better heat transfer, when you solder it, 
it's it's with some coolers almost impossible to cover the complete yeah, CPU. Yeah, the uh, the IHS or the, the lid or the uh, integrated mm -hmm. heat spreader that you see has uh, been fully soldered to the to the CPU dies and to the I/O die, which means the heat dissipation and the transfer is is almost perfect around the whole surface. Um, so uh, normally you would have to buy an increased cooler with a cold plate to have all this heat dissipated properly, right? Yeah. But now what you can do is actually um, benefit from um, you know a decently or let's say. Uh, um, an optimized design of our IHS and our production uh, to fully benefit from um, you know, heat dissipation, even though it might not fully contact the whole corner of the CPU. Still, you get the heat transfer because of the yeah. better it heat dissipation. Yeah, transfers left to right mostly, yeah. and then uh, it will go through the cold plate. OK. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, eight times coarse with simultaneous multithreading. So the, uh, let me see, 32 megabyte of level 3 cache per CCD, and the CCD is? The CPU die. The CPU die. So yeah. every single one of them mm -hmm. has 32 megabytes of level 3 cache. Yeah. Pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like almost several CPUs combined, basically. Yeah. Cool. So moving on to yeah. uh, performance. <laughs> we saw to performance before we start live demoing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just a little bit of a snippet. Um, so what sneak you, peek. On what sneak you can peek. Expect. Yeah, you can also say that. <laughs> uh, so if you look at uh, our uh, Ryzen 9 3950X on the mainstream socket AM4, 16 cores, 32 threads through uh, SMT, you'll see that in Cinebench R20, we have almost reaching about 9,000, right, the score. Uh, which is a which lot is, for mainstream platform. Which is really a lot for mainstream. This used to be the performance of high-end desktop platform, not extremely This long is ago. exceeding the performance yeah. of last generation's high-end desktop, uh, let's say barrier, I would say, or typical use case for a single CPU, yeah. right? So what we've done with the third, gen uh, third generation Ryzen Threadripper, um, as you can see, the 24 core is really already pushing the boundaries, or let's say the, to new heights in terms of the HEDT standard, I would say. And the 3970X with its 32 cores and 64 threads really shows that scaling from 24 cores to 32 cores in applications like Cinebench and others that are optimized for it really benefit from more cores. So it's the high core count that, that matters, but mm -hmm. it's also the IPC and the, the memory and the frequency, obviously. So all in all, adding to more performance. So now, moving from 32 cores to 64 cores, Obviously, it was interesting to see because it's always a chicken and egg story, basically. Like, hey, is the software uh, in front or is the hardware in front? So now we've come up to a point that in some cases, we need to push uh, software vendors, for example, to really start um, you know, supporting 64 cores and up. Uh, because our 64 core, here you can see a perfect example that it's really scaling well in Cinebench. And this really depends on the software, right? It depends on the software. and uh, Because some, some can already do Yeah, and sometimes it also scaling. depends on uh, what kind of OS version you use, um, what kind of drivers you use. So sometimes we see this as well. Uh, for example, uh, 7-SIP uh, really benefits from uh, those new direct uh, die um, uh, and uh, the, the Infinity Fabric, which is now direct per CCD, mm -hmm. uh, over the second generation Threadripper, we see major increase in performance in that as well. So not just from the high core count, but also from that part. So there is uh, some interesting things to be found once you start really, you know, uh, dissecting the applications and the, the use scenarios or use cases yeah. for these types of cores uh, counts. So um, always carefully look at the programs you're using and also how to optimize your exactly. software. Yeah. Because one wrong setting um, can cause your system not to utilize your CPU yeah, for a gamer, potential. For a gamer, if you have a wrong setting, you might drop FPS. FPS for yeah. a renderer or a professional, you might lo uh, lose, lose some render time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that's a horrible scenario. So you really yeah. want to optimize uh, both the software side of things as the hardware side of things and all your settings in the BIOS, in the OS, and get the latest patches in there as well. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, we talked a little bit about the customer already. Yeah, because uh, th this is not made for gamers, for example. No, no, this is purposely built for those who are uh, intending to use this on a day-to-day -day use uh, for uh, rendering, compiling, moving, mastering, and encoding. Uh, so and really whatever you CPU can throw and memory in. intensive workloads. Exactly, yeah. CPU intensive workloads, high core counts where that really makes a difference. Um, and you know, um, it, what it does is it, it actually enables us to um, show this market that HEDT is now on a different level, as I mentioned before. Uh, and for specific needs, we are seeing that the 3990X is already being maxed out by specific customers, new customers that we found. Uh, so it's always interesting to, uh, to look at what our customer is demanding. And obviously, they are sometimes demanding more RAM, more memory bandwidth. 
so this is up to, up to 256 gigs of support from the motherboard side of things. Mm -hmm. um, so you can uh, push the CPU when you are compiling, for example, uh, to its max using all those memory uh, at your disposal. Um, at the same time, if you're uh, really using CPU intensive uh, applications um, and you need that high core counts, you really have the 399AX at your disposal, you're lowering your, your time waiting for that uh, to be finished. Um, but we've also partnered, like we've mentioned before, with uh, big Hollywood studios like Blur Studio before, uh, where uh, AMD has helped with their third generation Ryzen Threadripper to render specific visual effects scenes of Terminator Dark Fate, that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, moving on, we've uh, continuously looking for more partners in this uh, industry because this is where these CPUs make sense. Uh, we see a lot of excitement for them. And this is also why we are very excited to announce our partnership and uh, yeah, our, our um, Exposure we've got from from red uh, camera for uh, for example, uh, and I think we've got a nice uh, little clip from that as well. Let's take a look at it. The ultimate goal is to be able to shoot, pull that into your system at full resolution, and just edit, and then export. That was a pretty high bar at 8K. The data footprint of 8K RGB is pretty massive, so we have to develop red code raw problem with red code is it was very CPU intensive. To try to get 24 FPS real time or 25 FPS real time, it almost seemed impossible. The first time I saw the 64 core Threadripper playing back 8K real time and transcoding faster than real time, it blew my mind. And when we saw the results of the 64 core Threadripper, it was the first time where you felt oh my God, this is massive. The performance is there and we're not even using the full capability of it, which is the exciting part. Now for a creative professional, there's no need to compromise when building a system. You have the 64 core Threadripper that can handle anything that you throw at. The idea of owning one system that can be your editorial, VFX, uh, coloring suite all in one is amazing. So there you have it. So Interesting we, to see. Maybe some people have noticed it. They're actually using the exact same combination that we're using today. Yeah. So the 3990X with Creator TRX40 motherboard. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, especially for workloads like this, that's that's where a 64 core comes in. It's a perfect combination, and I would say you know uh, working with Red Digital Camera and working with their awesome uh, 8K um, raw uh, codes uh, encoding. Because we think 4K is high nowadays, but they're editing in much higher resolution. Much higher resolution. Because 8K is like four times 4K resolution. Yes, and they are so, uh, that, that type of resolution is so intensive, um, you know, and it really de demands a lot of uh, raw performance from the system, a lot of uh, high core count performance, but also IPC. Um, and then you see the memory bandwidth also playing a, a huge role in that as well. And also uh, the fact that you have quad channel on this yeah. compared to dual channel on the mainstream. Yeah. There's yeah, a question in chat, how many power stages feeding the V-Core and the SOC on the creator? Later on, we'll also talk more in detail about the motherboard, and I'll also extensively talk about um, the VRM design on this motherboard. So uh, later on in the stream, I'll definitely answer that question in detail. Uh, Merrick is saying, this is why I'm waiting for a new motherboard before getting the Threadripper 3990X. Um, well, you don't have to wait, because the 3990X it's right here. runs perfectly <laughs> fine on the existing Creator TRX40, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, because we already prepared the, um, the VRM design to also be prepared for future processors in case you're going higher with cores. Of course, we also saw this on the mainstream platform. You already had the 3900X in the beginning, a 12 core. Later on, you launched the more powerful 16 core 3950X. Yep. Um, so it made sense for us to already prepare the TRX40 motherboards also for um, a step up even in CPUs. Um, compared to the launch of third gen Ryzen Threadripper. Yeah, and uh, us closely working with you guys, you know, it helps uh, f for us to prepare you guys for what is coming next. So, in the design of the TRX40, we've already notified you guys, like, hey, we got something stronger even coming uh, back when we started so make uh, sure talking your about the 32 are core. <laughs> exactly, so you, uh, you really uh, upped your game in terms of the VRM designs. Uh, BIOS support, uh, memory vendors, and, and QVL, etc. Mm -hmm. So compatibility, utmost stability, of course. Um, so we really wanted to make sure that n not only technologically and just looking at the sheer performance, um, 
that we uh, deliver the best of the best, uh, but we also wanted to make sure that everybody has a hassle-free experience, uh, utmost uh, stable experience, which is very important, obviously, especially when especially you're using this professionally, this, yeah. on, uh, everyday uses, use case. Um, then your render is almost finished and then it crashes. Yeah, <laughs> that would be bad. And I think, <laughs> I think if you look at the, the sheer amount of motherboards that came out on TRX40 and the, and the designs and the, uh, let's say, the beefiness of the boards and all the connectivity that they have to offer is to, to really to show that we are really fully aligned with this uh, third generation Threadripper launch with the motherboard manufacturers as well. I think then, before we start live demoing and before we start talking about the motherboard, I think uh, we touched on this a little bit, um, but since you and I are not the typical customer for this part, mm -hmm. it might make sense to touch a little bit more on this. Um, so let's leave this, this uh, information on the screen for a little bit. Um, but if you're in the use case where you're rendering, compiling, mastering, encoding, etc., uh, what we typically see as uh, also a, a advice we get or suggestions we get from these uh, types of customers is that they would like to use one to two gigabytes of RAM per logical processor for high performance and uh, to make sure that uh, you know uh, at least 128 gigs is used for a typical use case of this. Uh, today we've only using uh, 32 cores because we're gamers <laughs> and we didn't have 128 laying around, right? Yeah. So yeah, uh, it, it, it's really yeah, 32 gigabyte memory kit we have today. Um, but of course, if you're going to do very memory intensive workloads, then it makes sense to combine this with 128 Especially or even compiling yeah. and, and yeah, it, it makes more sense to uh, invest in large amounts, you know, capacity of memory rather than just high speed. And um, make sure you have four modules at least. Quad, so channel, quad channel, very exactly. important, yes. And uh, make sure that you keep running one-to-one -one Infinity Fabric that will also yield you a lot of performance uh, increase. Um, obviously, you need to make sure that your software is up to date, your OS is up to date. Uh, so ensure you have the latest version of Windows 10. Um, you have the latest uh, patching, uh, also again, security, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all the things uh, being uh, updated right now. Make sure you download that as well. Um, yeah, and, and scaling is maximized with, uh, you know, more intense workloads. So whenever you start noticing that one application is not, uh, you know, fully utilizing your CPU. Just open another application. You can do it. The CPU can handle it. I mean, just look at your Windows Task Manager, for example, and uh, just look at the 64 <laughs> beauty of all the cores. Well, later on, and we'll also show that threads. like in your yeah. Task Manager, you can see and like the load on every single core yeah. or every single thread, even. So 128 threads there. Yes, and then if you notice that, you know, maybe 128 are only used up to 30 percent then you can at least you know, run another uh, application on the side to utilize more of that power that you are harnessing in, the, in your system. So uh, it makes sense to, uh, to really keep a close eye on the applications that you're using and to optimize for it, optimize your system for it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll not mention them all, but there's a lot of uh, other optimization that you can uh, you know, use to uh, unlock more performance. But or also let's very say optimized dependent on the program, right? It depends on your program. Uh, one general advice we can give for at least the content creators out there is to have, uh, because of the, the I.O. access speeds and the sheer bandwidth that we are having, uh, to have uh, three separate SSDs, for example. One for your OS, one for your application, and one for where you're reading or writing your files to. Only three. We have, well, more today. We have six today. So. <laughs> I think we're, we, are, we, we are actually quite have okay. seven. We have six oh, Gen oh, yeah. fours, and we have a dedicated uh, boot drive OS, for Windows. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, that's the perfect use case then. Yeah, so definitely. Next time we should really get that 128 gigs and 256, oh, and we can, we can start rendering our streams <laughs> <laughs> and doing uh, animations while we're doing this live. Yeah, for the for the uh, storage speed, it's fine to have 32 gigabytes of memory. It yeah. doesn't really influence the speed. Okay. Uh, so yeah, for today will be good, but like for some specific use cases, definitely max out your memory. Yeah, and, and besides, you know, all those uh, eight memory uh, slots also help for that. <laughs> exactly, and uh, and besides all those uh, optimizations that you can do to really enhance your performance and stability, um, obviously make sure to also utilize the latest and greatest technology like PCI Gen 4. As we mentioned, uh, with those SSDs, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to enjoy up to 5,000 megabytes per second right now. I think some vendors already announced a couple of more coming out later, yeah. which are even va faster than that. It's like in theory, you could go to like. 8,000 megabytes per second. Yeah, with some overhead deducted. Yeah, then, of course. Yeah. Um, right now, the Gen 4 SSDs cannot, the controllers cannot reach those speeds yet, but <clears> definitely <throat> in the future that will be the case. And yeah. already now, the Gen 4 SSDs go way beyond the performance of Gen 
the, like the high performance Gen 3 SSDs. Yeah, so, so SSDs at the end is like of the, the, major the life thing. cycle, that would say yeah. the life cycle of PCI Gen 3 and the utmost highest performance ones are already yeah. easily beaten by, you know, the, the let's say lower end PCI Gen 4 devices right now. Yeah. yeah. But they're not really low, low end, end in, but in no, general. But you get the point. Yeah. I mean, it's really early in that stage exactly. for, uh, for PCI Gen 4, but they're already. And storage is really beating. where Gen 4 shines because in graphics, the current graphics cards. They don't fully utilize the uh, the interface of Gen 3 yet. Oh. So in the future, of course, that will differ. And in the future, graphics card will need Gen 4 to get their maximum performance. But right now, the difference is really in storage because yeah, they, they if can you're easily. A, if you're a content creator using really for rendering also mm -hmm. GPU uh, tasked um, uh, scenes, then you will definitely still benefit from PCI Gen 4. Yeah. But again, you and I are not that type of customer, so I'm not speaking from experience. And right now, that that difference is still quite small. In the future, this will be bigger because, of course, graphics cards get yep. faster and faster, so they will ask more and more from the interface. But SSDs were already like at their top of Gen 3. Yep. They were maxing out, and the interface was bottlenecking them. We also saw that with SATA, of course. Um, at a certain stage, all SATA SSDs reached pretty much the maximum of what the interface can do. Yep. And then we had that with PCI Express Gen 3. So now Gen 4 is welcome on the storage part. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we're about to demonstrate that as well, right? Yeah. What the major difference is in, uh, in that. Yeah. And it is so yeah, that, that is really uh, the 3990X from the theoretical side of things. So later on, we will show what we can actually do live on stream in terms of uh, sheer performance that this platform is delivering. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think before we dive into that, you have uh, something to say about the motherboard. Am I right? Maybe first we can do our first winner of today. Oh, winner for the giveaway. Sure. Is that a good idea? Oh, somebody's <laughs> asking, please pick me. Is it him? Uh, we're going to see. So if you haven't participated yet, make sure to go to msi.com slash two slash insider. I'll put it here on top, a little bit easier to read. I will also put exclamation mark giveaway in chat so if you cannot see the link on that page you can also go directly to gleam free games i mean who doesn't want that that's right? always good right sure have you played monster hunter before Monster Hunter? Uh, just once i saw it because I, I really don't have a lot of time to play games <laughs> anymore i'm sorry too busy with I, all the new uh, cpu launches so, bu so busy right now but <laughs> i think you guys can imagine yeah, yeah if you're busy we're generally also busy yes 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 <laughs> Yep. So our first winner of today, well, this, this nickname is correct. <laughs> nickname, Should I'm lucky. Yes, you were lucky today. Wow. <laughs> you uh, won our first code for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Um, if you haven't participated yet, make sure to do so because we will uh, give out more codes throughout the stream. Uh, if you're already enrolled, you don't have to enter again. You will automatically be in the next drawings as well. Congratulations. Congratulations, I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you already touched on it. With a CPU, of course, you need a motherboard, and that's where we come in. So, um, yeah, as we talked about, the uh, Ryzen Threadripper platform is not designed for gamers, um, but really for professionals and content creators. And that's also the direction we had it with our motherboards. So we have several models in our Pro series. Uh, currently, we have three models, uh, the TRX uh, 40-A Pro, the TRX40 Pro Wi-Fi and the TRX40 Pro 10G with 10 gigabit LAN. Um, but the model we're going to focus at today is our Creator TRX40, and this is really targeted at those very demanding content crea creators who do a lot of rendering, video editing, stuff like that. So extremely high workloads. Um, and that really had to, yeah, pushed us to give them the best and most stable motherboard we can we can make at this point, pretty much. Seems like the perfect match for a 64 core 128 thread CPU. It, it is a very nice match. Yeah. That's that's I think why we also saw it at Red Studios mm -hmm. at the, with the cameras. Yeah. The the combination is really nice and like the performance is insane. Um, yeah. So we already had a question about this in chat. What's the VRM of this motherboard? Um, Are you going to take off the yeah, heat sinks? <laughs> I, I'm not going to take off the heat sinks, but I'm just quickly sh showing where this is located. Here you can see the heatsink, and underneath you see a lot of chokes, but underneath the heatsink you have all the power stages, um, and you have 16 dedicated uh, power stages, 70 amp power stages, only for the CPU. Um, so these are direct uh, from the PWM to the power stage, so there's no doubler in between. It's a direct power design, 16 phases dedicated for the CPU, 
and then there is six or three dedicated phases for the SSC as well. So in total, you have 19 power phases there. Um, That's a and, lot. Yeah, it's a lot. But if you want to push uh, a 64 core to its maximum potential, for example, also if you want to do PBO, precision boost overdrive, um, then you allow the processor to draw more power to up its performance automatically uh, and that's also why for example we included two a pin power connectors here in the top uh, right so corner. this is this is almost more than a thousand watts right yeah being yeah. able to process that yeah and the cpu the 3990x is only drawing 280 watts but if you go outside of the default settings that's like the default settings this board yeah. will perfectly handle that fine uh, obviously making sure that you have great cooling etc yeah. that, that's also, a very important thing if yeah. you're going to use precision boost overdrive um, the, you basically allow the processor to draw quite a lot more power from the motherboard to up the performance by quite a lot as well. Um, but yeah, make sure that your power supply is strong enough for that, that your cooling is sufficient for that. And if you have all of those boxes ticked, then you can really get the maximum performance from your processor. So power design is a big thing, but also cooling, and not only the cooling for the CPU, but also the cooling on the motherboard. Um, so we went all out on this. We have um, a full aluminum design, uh, so that, let me show it up close on the motherboard itself. This part is like completely made from aluminum. There's only the RGB cover here, but this part's all aluminum. So it all helps with the cooling. Increases the surface area and helps to cool the VRMs. And dissipates as Dissipates well. the heat as well. Yep. Here on top, we have a stack fin heat sink um, and Interconnecting these heat sinks, there's also extended heat pipe cooling. Um, and that actually goes all the way down here, down the memory slots, towards the frother heat sink. And this means that actually the fan in the frother heat sink can help to cool the VRMs as well, because it's all interconnected to each other. So it's, yeah, maybe That's you can nice. feel it. It's, it's a heavy board, right? Wow, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a heavy CPU, so it makes uh, perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. CPUs are also quite heavy. Yep. Oh, this is, uh, this is very strong, sturdy as well. So there's a lot of cooling on the motherboard itself. So of course, make sure that the cooling on your CPU is also sufficient. Today, small teaser here, we're actually using our new 360 millimeter MSI water cooling. So this is still a new product. It's actually still in development. So the specifications are not final. So I, I cannot give you the final specs of this product yet. I cannot even give you the final name of this product, product yet, because still in development. But we already have a nice sneak peek here to cool our 64 core today. Just MSI as an AIO cooler, right? Yeah, definitely. That's we already um, teased it during CS. Um, so this is, it's not on the market yet, um, but I can promise you it will be soon. Um, nice. We're still finalizing some things. Uh, I hope you like it. You can already see the addressable RGB lighting. Um, maybe we can also show up close. We have a very nice water block here. And it has a very cool feature because sometimes you want to have um, your tubes on the other side. You can simply turn this around and then the logo is not upside down anymore. No, oh, that is convenient. Because that really triggers your OCD, right? Yeah, yeah. If, if, uh, oops, I'm dropping some boxes here. There we, there's so many uh, SSD boxes. Jenga. There's too many. <laughs> Let me fix that. So Good enough. Um, yeah. So you saw it first on the stream. <laughs> 360 millimeter MSI all-in-one water cooling. We're about to test it if it's capable of cooling the 3990X. So It is. I'm pretty, I'm pr <laughs> I'm pretty is. sure we will succeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but very important to have good cooling if you're using a CPU like this. Um, a simple 120 millimeter all-in-one water cooling won't cut it. Uh, no, especially definitely if you we recommend 280 millimeter and up anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, and especially if you want to do stuff like precision boost overdrive, if you really want yeah. to have the maximum performance from it, then make sure your cooling is good. You can also go custom water cooling, of course. And there are some really high-end uh, air coolers out there as well that yeah. are perfectly capable of handling these types of CPUs. But, but generally, they're big. <laughs> yeah, they're big, and generally it's sometimes easier to go for a water cooler. But if you really are uh, brand loyal, for example, you can still find that high-end air cooling is also sufficient to, call, uh, yeah. to cool these uh, third-gen Ryzen Threadrippers. Yeah, so cooling on both the motherboard and the CPU, very important to get the maximum performance you want. Something else we have on our Creator TRX40 motherboard is Creator Center software. And we actually have it installed in the system, so we okay. can take a short look at it to see um, what it does, basically. 
Uh, so let me see. Now we can see your desktop. Maybe you can open yep. it up. I'm here. You want to see the Creator Center? It's Martijn is controlling our demo system today. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm doing well. So first, waiting for the SDK initialization. There we are. Yeah, we don't have to log in we for now. Okay. Um, so here's a creator mode. Yeah, you can switch it on. Okay. What or you can already see is that you can see certain applications there. And in this situation, there are Adobe uh, programs that are installed on this system. So we have Premiere Pro, video editing, After Effects, also like the animation and uh, uh, effects within videos, uh, Photoshop, very famous, of course, uh, and Lightroom also for images. Um, and you can actually optimize each of these programs um, through Creator Center. So you can um, dedicate, for example, a certain course to a certain program. Um, you can set different priorities for different programs. So for example, if you want to render on the background and do something else on the foreground. Um, so this is really convenient if you want to multitask on this kind of system. And that's what this systems are, these systems are really good for. Yeah, and this perfectly aligns with what we said, optimize your application. So this is a helpful tool to do just that, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, it has a hardware monitor built in. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh. Yep. Let me find Close that. that one. See it's it on the, the monitor over here, right? Yep. Yeah, so you can see the current speed, you can see the voltages, uh, temperature, a lot of stuff happening there. So and free up memory. Yeah, so free up memory, so it will automatically uh, kill some tasks that are still running in the background. Flush um, and cache. Exactly. Yep. And take up memory without actually doing anything. You can also That's the more advanced show version. it on screen. Oh, drag it. That's nice on the side. Yeah, so you can monitor all your hardware, voltages, temperatures, everything. Um, also, it is a content creator board, but there is still some Mystic Light RGB on there. You can also <laughs> control this. Uh, so there you see the motherboard. Uh, so there's some RGB on the motherboard itself. Um, let me show it up close. Yeah, you can simply click it in the UI as well and then change it. Yeah. So I've now clicked the I.O. cover, basically. Mm -hmm. So if I then say I want this to be, let's say, double flashing, it should now be double flashing. If I press apply. Press apply, and then we see yep. it is double flashing. And you can not only control the uh, RGB lighting on the motherboard itself here, you can also use it uh, to control, for example, we have RGB memory in this. Um, you can link them and synchronize them uh, and also control the RGB on that. There are also several RGB headers on this motherboard, uh, both for regular RGB but also addressable RGB um, that you can all control through uh, the Creator Center software. And I think most importantly for those content creators out there, there's also an off switch. There's also an off switch. <laughs> And actually, not only in the software, also in the BIOS. Okay. Yeah. So if you, there's always people that really don't like RGB or lighting in general on their motherboard. You don't even have to install the software if you want to switch it off. You can also go in the BIOS and switch it off there. Yeah, that's nice. So that's the Creator Center software. And then you also have performance optimizer in oh, here as well. Let me get back to your capture. Yeah, you have performance optimization, so you can put it to high performance, balance, silent. Uh, so most of you will be doing high performance, I would say. Depends a bit on what you want to do. If you want to render something, then it can be. And uh, if you need the utmost stability, yeah, you would go for balance balanced. Or, yeah, or turn but it But for example, if you want to have it running at night to download something, to transfer a big file, you don't want it to run at maximum performance. Oh. You want your system to be silent. So. There's a nice preset for that. So let's open uh, Task Manager for now. <laughs> <laughs> Just a sneak peek of what we will sneak see. Sneak peek what we will do later. So let's just keep this. That's a lot of threats. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, do we have a question in chat? I think so. Yeah, Merrick is asking, does the fan on the motherboard start running when it's powered up or only starts running when it reaches a certain temp? Um, this is based on the temperature. So it has a propeller blade fan on there. Uh, with zero frother technology. Um, so the fan will only spin up if it actually needs to spin up based on the temperature. If the temperature allows it, if it's, for example, under low load, um, it will just remain passive. Yeah, so the system is virtually silent yeah. when you're exactly. uh, doing, let's say, idle right or now, low. Uh, show it up close. Right now, it's not yeah. spinning, actually. 
You see my coffee, though. Yeah, <laughs> you see your coffee. Um, yeah, so it's really based on the temperature. Um, like you know from our graphics cards, for example, they also have zero frost technology. If, uh, if you're just fiddling around in Windows or anything, your car is completely passive. If you're in-game, the fan will spin up. Yeah, it also depends on when you're utilizing more PCI Gen 4 the lanes and devices, yeah. right? If you How much strain you put on your chipset? Strain on the chipset, uh, what is you're drawing from the board and uh, from the PCH or the chipset, it's exactly. Yeah. Uh, then it depends on uh, when you start, um, you know, cooling it effectively with a fan rather than uh, ambient cooling or, uh, let's say, uh, uh, just from the heat pipe connected to the rest of the cooling blocks, right? Yeah, definitely. Airfelt is saying, in same watts, this VRM can pump the, <laughs> the 30, uh, 90X, I bet. <laughs> yeah, it definitely can. And this is really designed for these kind of CPUs. Um, you can also run this perfectly fine on, for example, the, our Pro models. They also come with a very strong VRM. They have a 12-phase VRM with 90 amp power stages, um, which is fine uh, for regular usage. If you want to overclock it, then we definitely recommend to go for the Creator TRX40. It has uh, four phase more, slightly more powerful, also more extensive cooling. So what you're saying, Michiel, is I should be back and we start ordering some LN2 and do some overclocking <laughs> on the next session. That sounds cool. Yeah, but, but, I think but no, we, we need to get hard. a different yeah. sample though. <laughs> we try to arrange that actually, but it's, it's quite difficult uh, insurance wise oh, okay. to get LN2 in here. Um, we'll because we're actually next to our warehouse with a lot of products there. Yep. So our insurance is quite complicated in that regard. Um, but yeah, maybe we can arrange something you have to come to my house. Yeah, we, have to, we can see it. maybe if we can arrange a mobile studio or anything mobile like that. Mobile studio. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure internet. Is it fast? That's fast. Yeah, that's fine. That's something we, we might be able to arrange. Yeah. We'll get back to that, okay? Okay, okay. Would, Sounds like fun. Let's check with Chad. Would you like to see some extreme overclocking with On the, the CPU? On the 3990X? <laughs> Sounds cool. See, Let that us is, know that if you would be interested in that. That is what we're good at. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, we're, we're not renderers or compilers or whatever. Yeah, we're gamers and overclockers. overclockers right? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, this is where I know I, I can use my skills and really uh, push this CPU forward and push it to the max. But Sounds good to me. Yep. It can handle it, pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure as well. Uh, yeah, and then storage. We already touched on it because we have so many SSDs right here. Um, and it's also because the Creator TRX40 offers a lot of space for M.2 SSDs. On the motherboard itself, you can put uh, three M.2 SSDs. And then we have the M.2 Expander Arrow Gen 4 adding card. I actually have it right here, so I'll show it up close. And this can handle four more SSDs. Let me show it from here. You can see the four slots. So in total, you can have up to seven M.2 SSDs on this motherboard. And all slots are Gen 4. Um, so you can actually combine all of them in RAID, etc. That is awesome. And so there is no capacity limit to these slots, etc. right? So you can throw in any size SSD in there. Yeah, yeah. And you can but throw seven at them, and it doesn't matter if it's one terabyte, two terabytes, sometimes four terabytes, whatever. There is um, the ones on the, these on this card, they're all up to 110 millimeters. On the motherboard itself, we have two up to 80 millimeters and one also up to 110 millimeters. Yeah. Um, but in general, SSDs tend Come to be 80, 80 millimeters. Yeah, yeah. So right now, the ones we're using, uh, let me actually grab it right here. So we have these extremely nice, very new Seagate Fire CUDA SSDs. Oh, so those but boxes are empty. <laughs> <laughs> they're empty because yeah. they're all, here we have the box. Uh, so the Fire CUDA 520 series, they're Gen 4. Uh, Seagate also has the 510 series. Uh, Gen 3 SSDs, um, so these are the latest and greatest in our product portfolio, and yeah, they're fast, they're really fast, which we'll see later on. Um, let's install the last one, because I have, this one should be in the system later on. Okay, you so want let's, me to shut down the system first? No, it's okay, let's okay. first install it in the, in the adding car. First I need to adjust the camera a little bit, so I can properly see it. So this is the M.2 uh, Expander Aero card. It's the new Gen 4 model. We also, with, for example, um, the X399 creation, we had uh, a Gen 3 version added in the box. But now, of course, with the Gen 4 motherboard, we also need to include a Gen 4 card. I like that it looks like a graphics card. I mean, it does. It doesn't, doesn't it? mismatch in your like system, our, right? Our Arrow ITX uh, yeah. series graphics card they actually look a lot like it. Um, and that's also why it's a proven cooler design. We know that it's a very good cooler with, and also very silent. Um, so that's why we decided to use 
some elements of it also in the so, so like the chipset cooler does it also support like tw uh, uh, zero frother technology etc it doesn't automatically does that but there is a nice switch on let me see if we can yeah. you see two dip switches here yeah. one is for the fan and one is for the leds that are located right here the status leds so you can switch off the fan if the temperature allows it you can switch off the dip and use it completely passive yeah. actually for the setup that we're using today is perfectly fine to run it passive okay um depends a little bit on the ssds you're using some ssds tend to get harder than others mm -hmm. um, so make sure to check out the temperatures of your ssd to see if uh, if it's possible to run it passively so as you can see we already have uh, three ssds installed let's install the final one as well here you can also see the temperature sensor there we go oh i have to screw actually in there so let's first unscrew that so this is it's extremely easy to install these ssds in it you only have four screws to open it up then you have four small screws like you also have on the motherboard to install then the two SSD and then you just slide it in your PCI Express. Yeah, one. one pro tip here is that to get a magnetic screwdriver because these tiny screws, sometimes yeah. you will drop them and if you have a high carpet or something, <laughs> they will get lost. Last week, uh, Eric did a blindfolded uh, oh, yeah, the game that. PC build and yeah. he was also very happy that we have, for example, these Magnet. magnetic tops on our screwdrivers. Magnetic tipped uh, yeah. screwdrivers, yeah. And here you can also see it, it's a little bit darker. Yeah, that is something from experience, really use those yeah. when installing M.2 SSDs. So now we have all four uh, Seagate Fire CUDA 520 series Gen 4 SSDs installed. We already have three installed on our motherboard, so that makes a total of uh, seven. One is currently our boot drive, um, so we will, we will combine six in RAID. That is awesome, so that is theoretically Six times 5,000 is 30,000. Theoretically, yes. Megabyte per second. That is great. I'm not going to give away too much, but later on we will uh, see what it can do. We will see what the performance is, yeah. Do you think it will scale 100%? Well, typically it won't. Uh, typically you have some overhead, etc. So uh, I would be uh, obviously surprised to see it, but I, I'm not saying it can't. It's just uh, it will surprise me if it reaches 30K for sure, yeah. But that's an insane speed. Yeah. I think that's the fastest I ever tested with personally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so maybe you can shut off the system so we can um, install this card on the motherboard. And before we do that, let me first explain where it's best to install this card. Because um, if you have you the motherboard right one? here, yeah. yeah, it's maybe so a little I'll bit easier. It. So here you have the four uh, PCI Express slots. The top one is a time 16 slot and this one is a time 16 slot because every M.2 slot can do four lanes you have 16 in total so make sure to use one of them generally you will have your graphics card here so I would always recommend to use this slot to put the M.2 extend arrow card of course you can also put it in this one or that one um, but they are eight lanes per uh, per slot You're so then your you, performance. Yeah, yeah. you will actually limit your performance to basically th gen 3 because two lanes uh, yeah. gen 4 is the same speed as what oh. four lanes gen 3 can do i think eric said you would break something so i'll let you install it <laughs> yeah <laughs> he expected me to break something yeah he said something in chat <laughs> i think it will be fine well you saved him in the blindfolded thing so <laughs> i saw yeah, that. that's true <laughs> um there is actually a power connector on top of this uh car uh there we go so here yeah. you see it. Um, right now, we're not connecting it because with uh, the SSDs that we're using now, they're quite power efficient, actually. They're crazy fast, but they're still power efficient. Um, so it's not required to, um, to plug it in. Of course, uh, in the future, maybe we get SSDs that um, demand more power and it cannot draw enough power from the PCI Express slot anymore. Then, just to be sure, we included a six pin uh, PCI Express connector so you can directly connect it to your power supply. Yeah, let's uh, switch this on again. You were scared for a second when it didn't respond. I just didn't pr <laughs> press the button press, properly. You, you missed it. But uh, unfortunately, Eric, it's still working. Yep. <laughs> Let me see if you have some questions in chat. He says you don't have to turn it off. Well, I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah. 
always switch off your PC if you're going to install new hardware. Um, Unless it's fans. <laughs> yeah. You can plug in fans any day. Uh, Baltic Seal saying, dear Vess, so maybe a new hashtag will be hashtag blame Mike. Yeah, it could work. But for now, we'll stick to blame Eric. Mm. <laughs> Just sounds better somehow. Or hashtag blind Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was last week. Yeah. He actually had a hard evening. He was like so tired because having oh, that blindfold imagine. on for I mean, hours. I mean, the saying goes, you can do it blindfolded. Uh, you, you, de you guys demonstrated that you can actually build a system blindfolded, but it's hard and you have to focus no. that hard. So I can only imagine that at the end of the day, your brain Like the building is process is not that hard, but the fact that you cannot see anything. Yeah, or misoriented. Exactly. Uh, but I think if Eric can do it blindfolded, Anybody most can people can build a PC, right? <laughs> In the end, he didn't break it, so um, yeah, I'm guessing that is proving. Um, is there a question? Do you have a giveaway? I see something. Yeah, we have the, gi the giveaway still running. Later on, we'll do another drawing. Okay, Let's okay. first dive a little I bit I just want to give you guys some free games. Right? Yeah, yeah. Not, not too fast. Okay, <laughs> okay. But we'll definitely do some more drawings. Um, so we're back in the system. Yes. Can you maybe open up the disk manager? The Management. disk manager. You mean in control panel? Yeah, I usually go to... Uh, oh, I mean disk management. Yeah, disk management. I don't think you see it here. Uh, no, it's in control panel. Uh, uh, control. I always panel. do a right click on this computer and then manage, I think it's called. But there you can also reach a computer management. Yep. I was looking for disk. And there's storage. And this management, yeah. Do, 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 do. Yes. So maybe, yeah, let's pull this full screen. So here you can see a lot of drives being installed. So we have seven 500 gigabyte M.2 drives installed. Uh, one is our boot drive, which you can see is disk two at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's our boot drive with our Windows installation. You can also see there. Um, on top, we actually have one already uh, active right now. With a uh, partition created. Yeah, so if you um, open the Explorer, you can also see that it already shows up as a drive. Oh, to this PC. this PC. Yeah, so you will see the Windows boot drive and Seagate 1. Um, so maybe let's show some crystal disk mark to see what a single Gen 4 SSD can already do in terms of speed. Okay. Yes, we want to run it. So... At the same time, it might be interesting to look at Task Manager, see what the CPU does in the background, right? Yeah, that's cool to see. Performance. More, please. Okay, so a typical test would be for Crystal Disk Mark to do three runs of one gigabyte. Rick is asking out. Gen 4 SSD or SATA SSD. What do you prefer? Um, like. In pretty much every aspect, an, a Gen 4 SSD is better, but it depends on your use case if it's useful for you. If you do a lot of gaming, you don't get a higher FPS from a Gen 4 SSD compared to a SATA SSD. Um, but for example, you will see differences in loading times. If you're loading a level, um, especially nowadays, games. if very big levels in yeah, certain games, titles. yeah, there you can spot a difference. So you might be in the server faster than others, stuff like that. Um, on other types of workloads, for example, if you're doing video editing, if you're transferring many large files, so maybe 4K or even 8K video files, they tend to be huge, like, like really huge. Um, and if you want to move them around um, in between drives, then you definitely benefit from Gen 4 compared to Gen 3, but especially SATA. So let me quickly show an overview um, of the differences in the speed of a hard disk drive, a regular SATA uh, hard disk drive, a SATA SSD, uh, an M.2 Gen 3 SSD, PCI Express, NVMe, or Gen 4. Um, so these are all some uh, examples from Seagate. So we have a regular hard disk drive can do up to approximately 200 megabytes per second read and write. Um, this can fluctuate a bit, so it can sometimes go a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Um, SATA SSD can go approximately 560 megabytes per second read, 540 write, and that's simply the maximum of the SATA interface. So that's also why at a certain point, um, like we basically had to switch to PCI Express to get faster storage. 
Yeah, move from AHEI to NVMe. Exactly. Uh, and you can see a huge step up from a SATA SSD in, in terms of speed compared to uh, a Gen 3 SSD. Because they can go, for example, we have the um, Seagate Fire CUDA 510 uh, series here, um, and they go up to um, 3450 megabytes per second on read and uh, 3200 on write speed. So that's a huge bump up compared to SATA. Um, and given the price differences nowadays, Gen 4 devices start becoming more and more affordable. Exactly. So it all depends on your budget, on uh, you know, and your what you're willing case. to spend. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're if you're, uh, let's say, using that money and you're a full-on gamer and you can save a little bit of money by going in Gen 3 SSD but getting a, a 5700 XT rather than a 5600 XT, for example, yeah. as a graphics card, then that might be a wise decision to go for that graphics cards instead of spending that difference in the yeah. SSD uh, department. Yeah, so it really depends on what you do. Exactly, but if you're, if you're upgrading your system and you have a new build system, mm -hmm. especially when you don't have a lot of data to transfer from an older system or you're just yeah. building a completely new system, then it makes sense to immediately go for a Gen 4 SSD. And in general, for for content creators, they tend to work with insanely large files and they will benefit more from it than, for example, a gamer. As, as a gamer, you will see some benefit in your loading times, um, but you will not see the insane gap that you will get uh, in content creation when transferring these yeah, kind of files. Yeah, especially professionals should always go yeah. utilize that new and technology. And you can also use them for caching and stuff like that, and it yep. will increase your performance tremendously. Um, so with Gen 4, uh, these SSDs, it depends on the size you have. Um, now, right now we're using the 500 gigabits per second, so the write speeds will be a little bit lower here, uh, and uh, we can see it later on. Yep. Um, the read speeds will be, I think we can go 5,000, should be fine. Yeah. Maybe let's take a look. So we're now connecting six or seven at the same time, but we're benchmarking six, right? Let's first start with one, so we can see what one does, and then we can take a look at the scaling. Uh, why do we do that? Ah, it's okay, you can just click it. The settings are all correct. The okay. one below. Yeah, otherwise this one takes too long. Oh, you mean this we, one? Yeah, we can just check. No, there. I mean all the uh, uh, SSDs. You yeah. want to test them simultaneously, right? Yeah, we'll do that later on. Okay, First, okay. We'll start and select the D drive. Ah, Because exactly. this is our Windows drive. So that, that was my question. Okay, yeah. Which one do you want to test? Yeah, this one. Okay. So this is one PCI Express Gen 4 SSD. It's based on the, uh, the Fison E16 controller, so... Uh, We've seen that on several SSDs, and it's really fast. Like, this is a first-generation uh, NVMe Gen 4 controller, but it already goes way, way beyond uh, what you can achieve with Gen 3. So the yeah, that's about 3,500 right now, right? Gen 3? Yeah. 3,500-ish. That is the max. So, so here we can see that we already go well beyond 5,000 megabytes per second, actually. And ride speed approximately 2,500. So this depends on the size SSD you get. Uh, I think, for example, the one terabyte and two terabyte models have slightly higher write speeds. Uh, in read, they're about similar, I think. Um, that depends on the uh, amount of cache that you're having yeah, on the yeah, device. Exactly. So if you're going with more capacity, it tends to have more cache, so it utilizes so it, higher speeds. Exactly. So this is the speed of only one SSD. And this is almost the speed that you would have with two Gen 3 SSDs in RAID 0 you can now do with only one SSD. Yep. So maybe we can add another SSD and put it in RAID. Which one you want to add? Yeah, we have to go back to disk management because now we have... Oh, you uh, want to enable it over yeah. there. Sure. Uh, I think we can. Doesn't it work like this? No. No. Just disk cleanup. That is annoying. It doesn't show as a program. Uh, let's go to control panel again. <laughs> disk management. Okay. Yeah, so now um, we can actually remove the first one and we will do disk zero. I'm sorry, what? You want to... Right click on the, on the right side. Just delete volume. Okay. And now we're... It's a D drive, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fine. It's, a, it's an empty drive for now. And now we're going to... I'm always careful when removing partitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. That's and good. remember my college only, days, everything was gone. Only be careful with disk two right now because that's where Windows installation yeah, exactly. is. Yeah, exactly. Like, for, for it won't let us, fine. it won't let us. Yeah. All the, the six Gen 4 SDs are empty, so that's perfectly fine. Yeah. So right now we will make a RAID 0 setup um, with the two SSDs that are located on the motherboard. So disk 0 and disk 1. So if you do a right click on the volume or you just leave it... Uh, uh, disk uh, 1 or 2? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay. And then new striped volume. Yep. 
Oh, maybe if I go too fast, I'll just yeah. do it a little bit slower. So this Try is how down. you set up RAID. This is how you set up a RAID zero. Uh, setup. So we will ask you a couple of things. Be sure to always read it before you click next. I never read it. No. I always just click. <laughs> just some advice to the audience right now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So here you see, like one is already on the right side, and you see the other five Gen 4 SDs on the left. Yeah, we so we want you just all of them to be. No, not yet. First, oh. let's first do two. Okay, okay. So we Sorry. can see the difference in the, in the speed and okay. see how well it scales with two. Okay. Next. Uh, always Wonder. assign a letter, so you know which one. So it's called D now. And here, perform a quick format. Yeah. No file compression. No. The rest, yeah, maybe we can give it a name, the volume label. Two SSD. Yeah. So it's two SSDs. And here, click yes. Always take a little bit of time. Yeah, that's right. Want to make it a dynamic disk? Yeah, we do. We do. So RAID 0 basically means you're all combining all the speed into one disk, one mm -hmm. giant drive. It won't give you six times 512 megabytes or 500 gigs, sorry. Right? It will. Oh, in this, in this, this case, yes, we're setting up RAID. It okay, will just yeah. utilize multiple Gen 4 interfaces, but it will combine the complete size of all the SSDs. So you will not lose any uh, Yeah, because the striped, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, if you want to so mirror, then... Yeah. They can actually see it if you go to this computer. Yeah, we should be able to see now. Yeah, that's the way we set it up. Yeah. Right now, you see... Yeah, you see one terabyte, yeah. almost. Yeah. So th that's actually a combination of the two 500 gigabyte drives. And on the left, you see our uh, yeah. boot SSD. Yeah. So now we have two volumes based so on three let's SSDs. Let's start this benchmark again. So um, maybe we need to restart this because we just made a red. I'm not sure. No, let's try. Yeah, we can try. I think it's in terms of science. Interesting. It might work because no, we because named it D again, but it still says 466. True. Maybe you need so I'm, to not, I'm not sure if it works. I'll just no, open my coke in the meanwhile. <laughs> it does. Oh, it does. Yep. It's just the UI has not been updated. Mm -hmm. So. But it still utilizes all that performance. So this, it's actually set to three runs right now. So it will automatically perform three runs and it will give the average performance that you will get in those three runs. So that's how they also test in the benchmarking media uses that technique. Yep, some of them. So that's a big increase. It, like we didn't lose anything on scaling. We actually it just doubled basically. Yeah. That is surprising. So we might be able to see that 30K. We might do. <laughs> wow. It would be nice. Yeah. So you want me to add so another drive SSDs. or you want me to go to four SSDs? Uh, let's go all out. All out? Yeah. Okay. All or nothing. I'm fine. Let's f first have to remove oh. the other two. Yeah. Then you have to recreate all the RAID. Yeah. yeah that is so it. first you remove the current. Yeah. The delete volume. volume. It will automatically do both. Yes. Once you break RAID, you're losing it. Yeah. Once one is dropping, then. So don't fiddle around with this if you have files on those SSDs. No, bad example. <laughs> yeah. So let's add them all. Six drives mm -hmm. or seven. No, six. No, because six. Some, because uh, one this is two our, is labeled as our OS. Yeah, yeah one yeah. is our Windows boot drive. Yeah. So next, D. And D, all good. Here we go six SSD. And perform, perform a quick format. format. It says a nice overview, except the current boot volume, yes. So now we have six Gen 4 SSDs in RAID 0. Let me restart Crystal Dismart just to be sure. So we can also see the actual volume of the... We can also see it on this, if you go to this computer, you can now see it should be approximately three terabytes almost, yeah. Yeah, you're always losing a little bit. Yeah. But it's almost three terabytes. So it is working. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Let's see how fast it is. So you want to do all the tests? Or I am Boris asking you making a partition. We're actually um, setting up a RAID uh, array right now with six Gen 4 SSDs. So we're combining the speed of six Gen 4 SSDs six of those and make boxes. like one. Yeah, exactly. And make one big uh, volume of it, basically. So we're using the uh, Seagate Fire CUDA 520 series for this. They're extremely fast Gen 4 SSDs. Um, and Combine six of them, yeah, take it off, let's see it. <laughs> let's start. So this is just one example of the TRX40 platform uh, with the power of Ryzen 3rd yeah. Gen Threadripper, obviously. Uh, on the storage side of things. Yeah, this is not combine. something you can do on the mainstream platform. No. Because you don't have the lanes available. Oh, you're benchmarking C right now. 
Ah, there we go. That's a Windows drive. So here you see a difference. It's yeah. just a single drive versus our RAID array. It's just so a let's... single drive Gen 3, and so now let's start six again. times Gen 4. <laughs> so we had, with two drives, we had 11,200-something 11 megabyte per second. Exactly. So we're, our target is 30,000 megabyte per second now. Oh. Wow. <laughs> we go over that. Well over it. Wow. That is fantastic. So this is almost 10 times the speed of a single Gen 3 SSD. With just using six Gen, six four, Gen 4 SSDs. SSDs yeah. Wow, that is great scaling. Well, there you have it, testament of performance. Uh, Judicator TV is saying on Twitch chat, seeing this M2 speed is just crazy. Yeah, they're insane. Yes, Almost, this is... Yeah, over 14K in ride speeds. So this is what you can do with a platform like this. If you have so many M.2 Gen 4 slots, and if you have so many Gen 4 M.2 SSDs, you can combine them and really get insane speeds. What you can also do, what's also a really interesting setup, is for example, have um, two sets of three. Um, so if you're going to switch files in between them, you can have the performance of this uh, is the scenario where you have one OS drive, exactly. one uh, for your applications, and one for your read and write, where yeah. you keep your projects basically. Exactly, but yeah. you don't have to use one drive for it. You can use one RAID one array, array for it. Yeah, yeah, you use an array for it. Yeah. So, for example, it, it shows as one volume, but it might be three SSDs in one volume and three SSDs in the other volume, and you could have like fifteen thousand megabytes per second that per is, volume in that speed. That is crazy. So I mean, if you're Transferring files in between those volumes, you really get insane speeds. I am worth saying 64 core, damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 64 core, 128 threads. Yeah, and uh, no more uh, data bottleneck, right? No. <laughs> this is what we're seeing right here. I mean, it's pretty insane. Transferring data is faster than ever. I mean, this is insane. This is the fastest I've tested so far. Yeah, so these are the SDs we're using right now, the Seagate Firecuda 520 series. So the Gen 4 SDs, they come in 500 gigabyte, 1 terabyte, 2 terabyte. Um, they differ a little bit in speed based on the, the size. So the, the 1 terabyte and 2 terabyte will give you even higher write speeds. Um, so the maximum, I think for the 2 terabyte model, it goes even up to 4,400 megabytes per second. We see that the maximum uh, reading speed that Seagate claims is actually 5,000 megabytes per second. But they're, they're faster in practice. We're faster, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a conservative claim. Yeah. Um, yeah, they can. Yeah, because the first them. drive is the Gen 3 drive, right? Which yeah, yeah. is probably stated for 3,500 megabyte per second. Yeah. And it was just showing 3,100 something, right? But all, there's also Windows installation. On exactly, that, so that, exactly. Yeah. But the, you know, in terms of, this is interesting to see that they're actually overachieving. Yeah, right? they are overachieving. Yeah. Um, because in theory, if you wouldn't lose anything on scaling and you would go by the claim of 5,000, you would go to 30K and it yes. can even do almost 34K. Um, that so is great. This, when I saw this for the first time, I was also flabbergasted a bit because I never expected it to actually go over that 30K. Um, and I've never seen these kind of storage speeds so far. Uh, Just imagine. At least not in access. a consumer yeah. or yeah, there's like a regular desktop yeah. platform. No, that's like, great. Yeah, that great. it's it's something you might see in in enterprise hardware in servers, but not on. You can't and just now build you see, it. Now you see the real benefit of having all those PCI you Gen can 4 easily lanes, put this on your right? desk, basically. So yeah. yeah, everybody can build this and easily set it up. So um, Edwin K is asking: Does the motherboard have 10 gigabit network card? It has a 10 gigabit um, LAN on the motherboard itself. It? So no separate card. It's it's already on the motherboard on the I/O. I am Wars asking what GPU. We're now using uh, the Radeon RX uh, 5700 XT Gaming X. So quite a big, fast graphics card. Um, but right now, we're not actually using it for testing. No, um, but it's a, it's a perfect match with yeah. the rest of the setup. Yeah, it's a nice match, definitely. Uh, <laughs> Can't wait for the first average Joe to ask me for a Gen 4 PC build for his daily use, says for millions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is something uh, that is going to be an interesting uh, one, especially when people start going into the shops and, I heard I need PCI Gen 4. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it depends on what you do. Not everyone needs Gen 4 right no, now. No, but it's... So, uh, but uh, yeah, you uh, can get insane speeds with it. And this is, of course, based on NVMe uh, interface with uh, PCI Express Gen 4. 
Um, it has the 2280, so the 80 meter form factor, and it's based on um, 3D TLC. And but and you can language. use it for any type of usage. I mean, yeah. if it's your daily driver for your OS, for your games, etc., you can use a single drive. If you really want to put files, large files back and forth, you can a uh, couple of uh, like uh, what we just did in RAID and have things running really, really even mm -hmm. faster than this. Um, so it really depends on what your use case is. But if you're using just one, I think one of those is just beautiful. But if you yeah. really need more, then the whole platform basically allows you to simply scale up and get more. One right? of those would, for example, be nice if you had like an X570 gaming rig, then it's really nice to have one Gen 4 SSD. Yep. Um, and of course, if you do a lot with uh, image editing, also if you have like a 3950X, which is 16 core, Still off the PCI Gen you 4. Can still, yeah, for prosumers, that's still yep, exactly. uh, still very interesting combination. Yep. So yeah, price is uh, dependent on uh, the size. 500 gigabyte is 120 US dollar. Uh, so that's excluding VAT in euros, 139 uh, with VAT. Uh, up to uh, 400 US dollar for the two terabyte model. Uh, three, 439 euros with VAT included. Um, so yeah. Gen 4 SSDs. Well, we covered storage. Yeah. What else do we want to cover today? Well, we promised something on the 64 core CPU performance. You want to dive into that yet? I think or that's a good idea. Or you have some more uh, info you want to share Because now we've seen the, the, like, the power of the platform, basically, the Gen 4. But mm -hmm. that doesn't say that much about the power of the CPU. So I think it's a very good idea to dive into that. I'm deleting the volumes. Oh, that's fine. Take some time. You want me to reboot first, or doesn't need it? No, it doesn't need. Okay. So I see a lot of threats in Task Manager. <laughs> yeah, we're running this at bare stock, right? So everything is stock, as you can see. Um, we're having some um, single-threaded, or uh, let, let's say a couple of threads and, and cores boosting to 4.3. Um, once we start utilizing all those uh, 128 threads, so let's do that with Cinebench, right? Mm-hmm. I think it perfectly demonstrates. So this the, is the same test that we saw in the graph, right? Yes, the graph. So the R20. So it should be about 25,000 points, right? Yeah. Going in Cinebench. So uh, let's see what we can uh, can do already. And and this is the R20 build because you also have the R15. Yeah. But R15 on a 64 core like doesn't make any sense. Like you blink and it's it's yeah. done. Look at that. It's utilizing <laughs> all, all the cores. So Cinebench <laughs> is the perfect example to show you like how fast you're building. And you can also, in Cinebench, you can see all the small squares. Like every single square is a, thre is a threat, right? Yes. So 128 threats. Yeah, so we just saw the, so we just saw the uh, CPU utilization per thread, basically, mm -hmm. per core. Uh, so let's take a look at Cinebench. And if you're running this at home, you know. So now how, 25K, we're going to really yeah, see. Yeah, you, if you're running this from home, you know how long it will take for this to be rendered, right? This scene in R20. So utilizing all those 64 cores and 128 threads, you can see this is just done in a blink of an eye. And just imagine this doing on your My old quad core PC at home takes like half a minute or something yeah. <laughs> to run this. Exactly. So <laughs> half a minute versus, what was this, 15 seconds-ish? Uh, this is less even. Yeah, 10 to 15 yeah. seconds. I mean, that is really demonstrating the, the power and performance. And the time you're saving, especially in the professional workspace, when you do this for a living, Right. Mm -hmm. um, so this really starts to make sense all of a sudden for those renderers, for those applications that really utilize more cores. I see some questions in chat. Ian is asking, where are you using this for? Right now, we're only using it for demonstration. But in practice, um, you can use this for 3D rendering, video rendering, stuff like that. Like very memory and CPU intensive tasks. Yeah, data compiling, data you know, compiling. downloading source code, yeah. uh, et cetera. Um, you but can also game on it if you want. But you can game yeah. on it, but it's uh, it's not the purpose for this CPU. No. It's uh, something it perfectly does well because it's based on the same architecture, Zen 2. <laughs> Judicator TV so. is saying, and I thought I was happy with my Ryzen 3600. You should be. Yeah, you I should. mean, if, if it's for case, gaming, definitely. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and if for, for some basic video editing, a 3600 is still fine. I mean, if six cores, just, 12 yeah, threads. If yeah. you're doing it once in a while, editing small videos and it's fine this is like if you're doing 8k videos yes then your 3600 yeah might be ready for an upgrade so Erfault is asking how many watts does the 3990x pull when running r20 so we had this at bare stock you know mm -hmm. the stock settings uh, so our tdp is maxed at out, uh, 280 watts right so we can open up uh, hardware info or 
Something we want to show. Uh, yes. Yeah, and there we can also measure the power it draws from the motherboard. Yep. So right now we're running it at stock. Let's see. So without precision boost overdrive. It's probably loading. Yep. Uh, Someone's so trying to get a little information from you. Arrow's mind is asking the ultimate GPU to couple this build with is a 5950XT, right? <laughs> Is that I a never GPU? heard of it, but no, okay. I never heard of it either. No. And also, you're not responsible. For I'm only GPUs, responsible right? for desktop CPUs, so uh, I too can't bad error is mine. What it, I it was a good attempt. No, I, I can't answer any questions on the radio side of things, but it's uh, for now with the 5700 XT. I think it's a perfect match with what we have right now, uh, and I'm pretty sure um, whatever we will bring out in the future will also be perfectly able to uh, scale well with this platform. Right. Yeah. Um, so looking at wattage, let's see. What we're running so let me open up so we can see it in the bottom package graph. power it's CPU over here power. yeah so we're fully utilizing all those 128 threads right now and it's so 100 percent load on all cores yeah it's it's uh, typically a little bit over the 280 watts but it depends yeah. on the board manufacturer the bios setting uh, sometimes you know a small difference variation. in the bios yeah. version allows for a slight variation but also uh, the tool used to measure this might be slightly different yeah. but at stock it should use 280 watts or in this it's case still within the margin it's, of it's error. margin of error yeah. i would say yep so i think it's uh, fair to say that we've reached that 25000 score mm -hmm. on uh, the default settings so is there something else we wanted to highlight maybe something with rendering I think we can show a little bit of Blender. Yeah, Blender maybe. is cool. I the think that's BMW a, test? I think we have that, right? That's this one, isn't it? Yeah. So, okay, let me close this one. Let me open up Task Manager again. Airfold is saying close to 300 watt stock. Insane. You can, if you use Precision Boost Overdrive, for example, you can push it quite far beyond 300 watts. But if you do that, make sure you have sufficient cooling on your CPU sufficient cooling on your motherboard, make sure the airflow in your case is very good, um, and your power supply is strong enough. If you have everything on the side, um, if all the boxes are ticked on that side, then you can pull it quite far beyond 300 watts, and it will also perform quite a lot better. Maybe in the end of the stream, we can do some precision boost overdrive. Yeah, sure. So we can see some, uh, some scaling with it. Uh, then you can, okay. also, can also see the power go up a bit, and you can see the performance also increasing. Yeah, well, the temperatures are perfectly fine, as we saw yeah. in, in the hardware info, so uh, in, the, in the monitor. So yeah. it's, uh, it's so we have now some... Now we're using quite a big 360 millimeter cooler. So make sure that you use a big cooler. Yeah, that's the you advantage want, yeah. if, if you're, uh, you know, uh, spending more money on a bigger cooler, a better cooler, it will give a you better more brand GPU, a better brand uh, power supply, etc. If your full, yeah. if your complete system is really, you know, um, Balanced, basically. Balanced into uh, high quality parts, it will help your overall system performance, right? Yeah. You don't want any bottlenecks. So let's try a scene to render an animation in so Blender. So you drive a BMW. Is, is it this one? <laughs> that's the that's the 1M Coupe. No. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> that's a good car. But you see, it's, uh, it's fully utilizing that 128 threads again. And it's so speeding through the So all the blocks you the see blender. is also... Yep. A threat, right? Yeah, it's, it's speeding through the whole animation process. And normally, if you try this at home, just download Blender and download the BMW um, uh, animation uh, and test this for yourself, you would see how much of a difference this makes going from a uh, 64 core from a 32 core, for example. So here you see it's done. And now it will start animating again. And you will see it fully utilizes all those threads and cores. So it's, uh, it's really nice to see that applications, once your system is perfectly configured, really benefit from scaling. Yeah. Um, let me see, Edwin is asking, where can you get the wallpaper you are using? That's a very good question. I actually, maybe this one is also on our website. Let me um, close this one and let's see. But I didn't this put this wallpaper on myself, so I'm not entirely sure. I would take a look on our website to check if it's there. Fire and ice. Otherwise, I'll try to find out. Remember me next time if I forgot, then okay. you can punish um, me for it. You want me to uh, try once more some PBO? Or shall we draw another winner first? Let's do that. <laughs> That's a good idea, right? You guys want to win games, right? I mean, let's yeah, do that. So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash to slash insider. 
Our chatbot is also spamming the link directly to Gleam. <clears throat> so today we won't do any manual overclocking. We will just test PBO, single setting. And uh, show if you can boost some more performance from the system. There we go. And again, temperatures are really low, so... So our next winner for today... I don't Shall know I how to... Him? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to pronounce this, do you know? Vikas. Vikas, Vikas. Vikas or Vikas. Congratulations, yeah. you also won a game code for uh, Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Yeah, congratulations, man. Enjoy it. Congratulations. If you haven't participated yet, please do so. If you already uh, signed up earlier today, no need to do it again. You will automatically be enrolled uh, in future drawings as well, for today at least. Mm -hmm. People are already trying to get some information about future products from AMD, I see. Oh. <laughs> they can try. <laughs> Can always My try. lips are sealed. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt if it works, but so you can always try. I'm just enabling PBO now. Okay. And I'm just going to reboot and see what we can, uh, ah, yeah. can see. So see, this is really the, the icing on the cake. It's quite interesting because Cherry you see on top. It's, it looks like the, the fan on the bottom is white in the middle, but there's actually also, it's also black like the others, but it's the reflection of the... It's your green yeah. screen. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a reflection of the lights, I think. Yeah, it might be. You can move it slightly, perhaps, so it will turn up. No, nope. I won't touch yeah. it. Or I'll hashtag Martijn broke it. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag blame Martijn. Yeah, yeah, that is not. No. Nope. No, fortunately. New names 4700X, 4900X. Are the future products even called 4000? I have no idea. Huh? No. But it's always nice to guess as an end user. Guessing game. <laughs> That's always fun. Yeah. Now, we are perfectly happy, obviously, with what we've launched last year. I mean, coming in from where AMD was, we made some big bets, obviously, mm -hmm. trying to get Ryzen out of the gate. And, and I think Ryzen has proven once we got that multi-core or, let's say, that, that, that core advantage over the competition. And we always had a really good price performance ratio. Uh, with third gen Ryzen, we've shown that we've also taken a performance crown. Uh, so I think all the the right check boxes are now marked for AMD right now. Uh, so we're in a happy place right now if we're looking at that. Yeah, something to build on also for future generations. Yeah. I think what's quite interesting maybe for um, people that uh, don't work in the hardware world, but uh, it's interesting to know that you always see rumors about new product names. And usually you see them like way before the name is even final. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it will be called this and this. And internally, it's, it's usually it's not even final yet. Yeah, 99% and I think is many false. people don't even realize, like, um, in a very late stage, um, names can still change. So you can read. You and I like, know sometimes weeks before a launch, still yeah, changing it can names be quite can so happen. So, definitely. Yeah. So, also your future CPU generation. You always read rumors everywhere, um, but it might not even be final yet internally. Yeah. Or maybe you think it's final yet and then something changes and the product name changes or the product changes. Or yep. So it's, yeah, rumors are always interesting to read, but they're all. I'm never speculating times. on future products. Yeah. You know, I'm just happy with what we have right now and I want to want people to know and learn about getting all the performance out of these parts. But it's also a compliment because it means that people are looking forward to the future generation. Sure, sure. I, I get that. I mean, you and I are in yeah. hardware enthusiasts, so we always look in the future. <laughs> That's right? true. But I really enjoy, you know, pushing these. What we just saw and today people in with chat are SSD. trying to look into the future as well. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. Okay, so now we've enabled PBO. Mm -hmm. So let's open up Cinebench again. So Precision Boost Overdrive, and this will automatically Basically, overclock your CPU based on based on thermal limits, based yeah. on uh, power limits, etc. What the board can handle, what your cooler can handle, up to a safe point where it will just say, "Okay, I'm now going to throttle down." So yeah. I'm now going to lower frequency in order to protect myself, basically from overheating, from overvolting, etc. So um, yeah, it's a little bit of uh, automated overclocking, I would say, uh, without being, you know, getting into the whole overclocking business of learning all the manual stuff mm -hmm. that needs to be learned before you start diving into that part. So this the, is like not a, not the regular um, 
turbo frequency that you have, but this can go beyond, right? Yes, this is just really for those who invested in better coolers to really give something back. So to really give more performance even than we are advertising on the box or on our product pages, etc. Um, to really uh, make sure that you benefit from those investments you made on those high-end coolers, for example. Yep. So we've now opened up Cinebench again. Maybe we can, oh, mm -hmm. we're already on screen. Okay. So you want me to run it? 25,127 was a previous score. <laughs> People are still trying to get information. Judicator TV is saying AMD claimed that 5900 is twice the speed of 5700. Ah, we turn it down. Okay. We pushed it too far? No. Um, can MSI Gaming confirm this maybe? I actually have no idea. So I, no, I what, cannot what do you want confirm, to confirm nor deny. It's also graphics, so it's not also not your expertise. Because my time is really about CPU business. Yep. No, I'm, I'm so only if in you're CPU fishing, business. it's best to fish for information in, in the CPU segment. Yep. <laughs> that, yeah, there's no need Maybe to fish need in to. the GPU. Yep. yep. Is there a power switch in the PSU? Yes. I have it right here. Uh, let me see. Oh, okay, we're talking about discounts on the 200 or 2000 series, so the second generation Ryzen. Yeah, you actually can get them for very competitive prices nowadays. Yeah. So, for example, the, the 2700X, is, it's quite affordable nowadays if you do... Um, it's an insane CPU, 8 core, 16 threads. Yeah, it depends a bit on what you do, what's more yeah. interesting, because many people are in doubt between, for example, Ryzen 5 3600 or Ryzen 7 2700X. Yeah. Uh, if you do... Yep. Um, some editing, stuff like that, some of the more multi-threaded workloads, mm -hmm. then 27X will usually be faster because it simply has two more cores and four more threads. Yep. If you do mostly gaming, then the 3600 will usually be the better choice um, because of the improved IPC performance. So it really depends on what you do. But yeah, you can definitely pick some sweet 2000 series up for a good price. Some more questions? That's a lot of questions. Yeah. Oh, people are really hyped to see what we come up with next. Well, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. As a hardware enthusiast, we're always hyped to see what, yeah. what's next. No, it's uh, it's really an honor to uh, to be working in this business and for these uh, really great engineers bringing out these types of products. I mean, pushing the envelope in terms of performance every generation one step further and this i think is skipping a couple of steps if we look mm -hmm. at performance on you know the number of core count uh, what we have but also uh, the the raw performance it is delivering it's, it's, i think it's a huge testament of what our engineers are capable of mm -hmm. yep so mr. i messed up one setting <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> uh, mr stephen barnes is saying cost of electricity in the uk is a big turn off from buying anything these days is it is it that was more expensive, huh? Maybe because of Brexit? Could it be, has, but yeah. you know, the great thing is with 7 nanometer and Zen 2 architecture, the yeah. performance of per watt is actually, you know, the best in the business right now. Yeah, and that's also quite a common misunderstanding. Like, for example, if you're rendering a certain video, um, a lower-end CPU doesn't draw as much power at once, but it will render for a longer period of time. Yep. So in total, it might still use more power than when you have, for example, a 64 core that draws a lot of power at once, but also will render your video much faster. So it will not run uh, under load for such a long period of time like you would have with a slower CPU. Yeah. And I think performance per watt is it's a way better measure to see um, like how much it will, you have to pay in your electricity bill than um, the actual power draw of your system. So I ran an instance with PBO enabled. Oh, it's not on the screen. Uh, Sorry. Oh, let me. Yeah, we have a black screen. <laughs> it hmm. should be on the screen somewhere. That's interesting. Let me try to open it up again. Oh. Can you put the HDMI back in? I think our capture card is crashed. Yeah, it could be. Okay. Or the display port one. No, it's the HDMI. Okay. Hello, capture card. Are you still awake? Well, it's giving me a score of 27,780. So. That's a nice increase. I think our capture card is not... It might have crushed. Hmm. That's a pity. Again. 
something happened. <laughs> <laughs> At least the stream didn't crash this No, time. okay. Well, let us know if you're still there and watching. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we've uh, but we have a rebooted close -up cam. and run with PBO enabled. Let me hand you over this camera. Okay, okay. I don't know let's if the cable that. is long enough. Yeah, let's try it. Let's see if we can... If we can sh still show some of the performance. Do you have enough cable like this? Yeah, try it. There we go. Uh, yeah, if you turn it a little bit, watch out for the cup. Yeah, let me move this <laughs> old coffee Okay, cup. so the capture card died on us, but we still... 27. So, want me to render it again? Yeah, so we came from a little over 25,000. Now we're getting close to 28k, actually. Yeah. So, let's render it again. Preparing the <laughs> render. Airfault is saying, pull too much watts from the wall and <laughs> crash the streaming PC. Now, luckily, the streaming PC didn't crash. Only our capture card. It's struggling a little well, bit. Well, to be fair, in all honesty, if we really want to push this platform to the limits, you would really need LN2 cooling anyway. If so you it's, really it's, push the So it's not yes. even drawing that much power just yet. No. Because it's now sensing the thermal limits. And we have so many sensors in these CPUs that it will automatically detect, hey, I need to slow down a little bit just to make sure that, uh, you know, in terms of thermals, I keep uh, at, the, at the right levels of yeah. thermals. Yeah. Bye, Eric. <laughs> I think Eric was checking on our streaming yep. card. Um, I think the streaming no, card is uh, the streaming not working card is anymore. No. Blacked out completely. I did. We already tried, but uh, let me try again. Maybe move to a different scene first. Yeah. I think in terms of performance, uh, we've shown a nice increase uh, when you couple it with a decent cooler. Yeah. Um, I think that was one of the major points we wanted to show today. And we also have an overview of software compiling benchmarks, actually. Yeah, yeah. So we weren't able to demonstrate that today, um, but I think it's nice to uh, talk about. Especially not with our streaming card crashing. But no, is it still crashing, by the way? Is it still on black? Uh, let me take a look. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's still black. black it's not coming back. OK, so yeah, um, because we weren't going to demonstrate that today, but we were talking about rendering. We've shown some Blender renders, et cetera, uh, Cinebench performance, and, and what these, this platform is capable of, but also the CPU. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a software compiler, you can mm -hmm. see, depending on the software you're using, that you can also benefit from the scaling from a 64-core CPU. Uh, but again, we recommend here that you use a one gigabyte per logical core. Um, or two, one to two gigabytes. So this means you'll end up with 128 or 256 gigabytes of memory. So here it makes sense to have a large capacity of memory set up mm -hmm. to utilize all those 64 cores and 128 threads. But you can see there is still scaling moving beyond 32 cores. So software like this still benefits a lot from more cores. Yes, and again, it saves you time, which enables you to work on more projects. Um, or get more free time. Eros Mine is saying, what speed is the memory running? We're currently running... Um, 3200. I actually have the specs right here. It's Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR4 3200 uh, kit. It's uh, a quad-channel kit, so four modules, so um, it has the maximum bandwidth there. Um, Eros Mine is also asking, why don't you overclock it to 3733 um, and uh, well, we Infinity Fabric to 1866? Uh, yes, that will give you more performance. Today, yep. we haven't really focused on overclocking, so... You can definitely overclock anything on this platform. Let yeah, me be yeah. clear. I mean, the CPU you can overclock, you the can memory definitely you can overclock, the GPU, the uh, even, uh, you know... Get so you more gain even more Cinebench performance. Uh, yes, yeah. if you overclock it, you definitely do. Yeah, and, and you just need to invest time, get to know this platform, yeah. get to know your setup. I mean, uh, it's, that's like the fun of overclocking. Like 37, 33 is usually like the, the sweet spot. Yeah, 3600, 3600, 3700, 33, like in price most of performance, them. performance, I would say 3600 maybe. 3600 at large, yeah. large capacity is what also quite affordable would be models. perfect for uh, professional use or prosumers in this sense. Yes, and for gamers specifically, yes. Uh, Parotronic is saying, my Ryzen 7 3700X is slower. Yes, it obviously is, but it's <laughs> also a lot more affordable. Uh, so it makes sense. It's more of a consumer product, and this is more prosumer towards professional. Shall I? Product. I uh, and in games, your 3700X will be perfectly fine and at least on par. Okay, so I moved everything back to default. Let's see if the capture card wakes up again. Uh, <laughs> Airfault is saying, also single core clocks plus performance on 3990X is just as good, if not better than 3950X, uh, right? Um, I think it's similar, right? Single core clocks plus performance. 
Well, the 3950X is an entirely different are, beast. Yeah, uh, like the, it's the, the same architecture. Threads, it's but the same architecture, but obviously to stay within the TDP limits yeah. of uh, using 64 cores, yeah. we had to downclock the base clock a little bit. Um, and on the uh, single threads, uh, uh, single core performance, it goes up to 4.3, whereas the 3950X goes up to 4.7, yeah. top of my head. So the single uh, core performance on the 3950X it's actually, slightly better than yeah. uh, 3990X. Yeah, so that makes these parts kind of equal in gaming. Yeah. Uh, the 3990X is perfectly capable because it utilizes the same Zen 2 architecture, yeah. 7 nanometer, but it has sli slightly less higher boost clock. So it would actually make this a perfectly capable gaming yeah. CPU. But if you utilize this entirely for gaming, I would recommend an AIM4 mainstream. Makes uh, more sense. Also, in terms of price, three. it would yeah. make way more sense because Inter then it's more useful to invest in a better graphics hey, card. Hey, gamers always talk price per frame, right? <laughs> That's Definitely. the thing. So, yeah. <laughs> but if it's price per render or price per project you're talking about, then this will definitely yeah. win everything. It's a different target group. Yep. Aerosmine is saying, my Ryzen 7 3700X runs at 4.5 GHz all cores, my memory around 3733 That's, That's a nice setup. Yeah, it's a nice setup. And it, uh, the, those clocks and the memory speed is also right in the sweet spot. So for, especially for gaming, this is pretty much maxed out in performance, what you can get from a CPU nowadays. Yeah, you seem to have a really nice setup, man. Uh, can you see if the capture card is working yet? Or else I'm uh, going to have to think, say, um, uh, unfortunately, at least rip, we've got the show. Rip, <laughs> rip capture card. card yeah. yep. Well, we maybe bad. it couldn't handle all the performance. I don't know. It's too we know what happened. Well, anyway, we got the show performance this time. Yeah, and live demo true. it. So that is great. But it also means I need to come back another time. <laughs> yeah, because we kind of broke something. Or again, maybe so. we head to you for some Alan two. Yeah, exactly. Let's see. Let's so see. Let, let, definitely let us know what you think of that idea. So we can try to make it happen if you, you guys will be interested in some Alan two overclocking. Uh, yeah, we have yeah. to see what platforms we can arrange and we can do many different things. Just let us know what, what you would like best. If so shall we pick a final winner for today? Yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, you know, make somebody really happy today. Yeah. That's always a nice way to close off, by making someone happy. Yes. Pick the winner. There we go. So our final winner of today will be... Drawing, drawing, drawing. Um, are you going to do it again? Uh, Kirito Saga or Kirito Saga. Kirito Saga, congratulations. You also won uh, a game code for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Um, so all the winners will send you the game code in the coming days. Um, if you didn't win this time, next week we will have a new live stream, a new giveaway. So make sure to check it out. Martijn? Thanks a lot for coming here again. Thank you very and, much uh, for having me. For all the explanation and answering all the questions of the audience. <laughs> and thank you guys for tuning in. I mean, yeah, Definitely. it's awesome. And congratulations to all the winners. Enjoy your games over the weekend or yeah. next week when you're uh, being uh, I see playing. some people are fan. Come back again soon, Matijn, especially with any <laughs> announcements. <laughs> sure, sure. I'm always I'll, interested I'll, in I'll make sure to check with our legal team first. But <laughs> hey, uh, if I can give some announcement, I'll, I'll be sure to drop it here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, thank you all for watching. Um, next week we have a new live stream. Jazz is going to talk about, um, I think, a combination of uh, systems and monitors about upgrading to make your system ready from 1080p to 1440p. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so make sure to check it out. Same place, same time. Thank you for watching today. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you will see Matijn back later on in some stream. Uh, hopefully with a cool new announcement, right? I'm happy to come. <laughs> thank you, everyone. And goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.